gym with Chris Lobbies. And today, we're building this crack poker. Okay, for this build, I have my Crack Series Pro power combo. I've got my foam tack. I've got everything I need in the box. I've got my hardware kit. And I take it all out, inventory it, and make sure it's all there. Uh, but make sure you do print out the manual because that does not come printed. Then we're going to fold over all of our ailerons. And on this wing, we've got a ton of ailerons. In addition to that, we'll fold over our rudder and elevator. And I put some weight on them and leave them sit for about an hour to loosen up. While that's happening, I'm gonna get out my electronics. I'm gonna hook up my receiver and battery and ESC, all the stuff, make sure it's all working, zero out my servos. I'm going to calibrate my ESC. There's a whole video on that if you want some more information. Then I cut apart the fuselage. I'm ready with the elevator to put in some stiffeners. And I test fit these first, and then I scratch them up with some sandpaper rub them off with some rubbing alcohol, and now they're extra clean. I fill the slot with some foam tack. I really enjoy using the foam tack over the CA for the most part. I put that in there, press them down flush, and then let it sit flat so that way it doesn't dry, uh, bent or anything. Then we're gonna put the pieces together for the fuselage and the elevator, and I touch them together and then pull them apart for about a minute and then put them back together. I'm also measuring to make sure that it's in the right place. That way it doesn't, uh, doesn't get all cattywampus when you're flying it. Then we're gonna start on our middle wings and I use the same procedure where I'm gonna put some foam tack on it, touch it to the fuselage, pull it apart, leave it for a minute and then push it back together. I'm gonna come back and push these back together a few times. Again, checking for square by going from the wing tip to tail tip. Then we're gonna start on our wing spars. And again, I just scuff these up. It's probably not mandatory that you do this, but it is what I do to make sure that they don't let go. So I got them sanded and then we do a dry fit. Always do a dry fit because you don't wanna get glue in there and then get it pushed in and realize it's not long enough because then you gotta cut it a little longer if it's not deep enough and then it just makes a big mess. So I always dry fit it beforehand and then I'm gonna push it all the way in, pulling out the blanks for the servos, and then we're gonna fit the servos into place. On these servos, we're not using any extensions or anything like that. So just the servos themselves with the longest arms that they have in the package, glued them into place. Then we're gonna move on to the hardware kit where we are going to be grabbing the stuff for our aileron push rods and our gang horns. In the manual, they have you use the motor mount to push on the end links. And instead of doing that, I, I tried it, it didn't work for me very well, but I have a little jig set up that there's a little video showing how I make it, where I run a drill in reverse, and then I drill a little hole in it so that gives it a little divot for the clip to sit in as you push the link in through it. So I use my piece of wood and get all of those gang horns assembled and correctly pressed together. And then I go back to the hardware kit to find the push rod for the ailerons. I find those and assemble them. And we're gonna do our control horns as well for those ailerons. So I trim them up and sand them to get them scuffed. I put them in place. And then we're gonna adjust the length of the push rod and then we're gonna glue it in once we snap on those clevises. So I've got some glue on that side. And then I'm gonna snap the clevis in, put in the push rod. Make sure it's flat on the table when you're doing this. That way it's the correct length. And also make sure your servos are centered at 90 degrees. Then we're gonna glue in those gang horns and I put the adjustable end links on the outside edge on all of those wings when I do them. Using some CA glue to set the push rod length. And I use a little bit of kicker on those. And then we're gonna do the vertical part of the lower fuselage. Always dry fit it, make sure it's all good. 
and then I lay it down so that I can kind of get an idea of where the glue needs to go. And then we press it into place and then I use my square to make sure everything is square. Next, we're moving on to the vertical fuselage bracing and I'm cutting all those to length. It has all these measurements in the manual. And then once those are cut, we are going to be placing them in as a dry fit. Once we're happy with the dry fit, I'm going to put a little dab of glue on each end and then replace each one down the line. And then again, we're gonna go for our T-square and make sure everything's all lined up before it all sets in place. Now back to the hardware kit for the fuselage reinforcers that the landing gear goes through. And you can see that I spray painted mine. I should have spray painted everything that's on that little card before I even cut it out, but I just spray painted those black and they just press on into place with a thin film of foam tack. And these are the fuselage stifters that the wings go through. And you can see I, I should have painted those too. I don't know why I didn't, but I should have. Anyway, get glue on both of those, make sure they're faced the correct way. And then I use a little piece of carbon fiber to make sure that they're aligned correctly. Next is the interplane struts that go between the wings and they're gonna have a small carbon fiber stiffener. Uh, also, you can see here, I'm not using my parchment paper underneath here. I probably should be because that helps keep everything from getting glued to your work surface. Uh, there's only four of those interplane struts that have the carbon fiber stiffeners between them. So they go on the outside. Here, I'm cutting a little hole for the servo wire. So that way I can put these stiffeners above that and they don't get in the way and then i just foam tack those in place and then we're going to be ready to put the bottom wing on these do tilt towards the back of the plane the ones on the bottom of the fuselage and there i'm putting the carbon fiber spar into the bottom wing get a good test fit then get your glue in and let it dry once it's dry, you come back and then mount it. Oh, but first I put on my gang horns. And then we're going to fit the spar into the doublers on the fuselage and onto the interplane struts. Put some glue on the interplane struts. And on those, to make sure you have them the, rec the right direction, you want the large tabs facing up, small tabs facing down. It gets all aligned, all glued up. Then we flip it over and we start on our wheels. So these little triangular pieces, they're all garbage. It's only the little circles that we wanna save out of there. There's probably gonna be one side that's cut better than the other for the, the laser on that ball supply. So I just cut through the side that's not as well cut with the hobby knife. And then as I put these together, I use the axle, but I, I keep it spinning and keep it moving so that way it doesn't glue the axle in place. Put the hubs on each side of it and then set them aside to dry for a little. From there, I'm using the foam tack with the foam onto each of the sides of the wheels. And then after that gets done, we're gonna go with the tires around the outside edge. I love these wheels because it allows you to land and take off on grass, which is excellent. Now we're working on the wing for the gear and I'm using these calipers to measure so that I have the same distance out each side. And we install our four landing gear struts. Once we get them crisscrossed through the fuselage and all lined up, we're gonna trim them flush with each other. And then we're going to put the assembly together on the wing for the gear. That little dot faces forward. And then it has a little 
collar that goes on and then they have you use the aluminum collars to hold it all in place like that. Once that's all in place, I made sure it was level and then we glue those with just a couple drops just to hold it in place. We're going to take those aluminum collars off once that dries. And then I'm going to use some thread to reinforce those areas. I used about 18 inches of thread and I used the foam tack because that way it uh, keeps it all together. It's kind of gooey so it holds it all in place as you're going around and around. And mine doesn't look real pretty, but the wheel is gonna cover this area. We just want it all to hold together. And I repeat the process on the other side. Once that's all done, we install our wheels and then install the aluminum collars. Now we're working on our final wing, our top wing. And again, put some foam tack on there, let it tack up, push them together. Dry fit the spar, put some glue into it, and then fit it in place. I'm using the back of the hobby knife to push it all the way down. Just gotta make sure to clean off your hobby knife really quick before the glue sets on it. And then again, we install our final pair of gang horns with the adjustable end links on them. Now we're gonna work on the top fuselage. In order to do that, we need to make sure that we get our servos into place. So I'm gonna set these. There's no servo extensions needed. I just used the horns right out of the kit. I got those into place, ran the wires down below the fuselage, and then got my glue into place. Once the glue is spread the whole way down the fuselage, we will fit it into place. And then we're gonna go back with our square and make sure everything is square. Okay, that's looking great. Now we need the vertical stiffener that goes from the top wing all the way to the bottom wing. And we're gonna glue those together with a little bit of CA glue. And then you need to cut this hole open so that it's all the way through. I had to cut it from the top and bottom a little bit. And then you can slide this all the way down. And this has to go down between the bottom doublers and it's gonna go between the top doublers as well, which we are now gluing into place. I use a little piece of carbon fiber to make sure that those are parallel to each other so that way we won't have any problems when we put on the wing. Again, we're putting on the last set of interplane struts and the shallow tab goes into the wing here and the longer tab faces up. Everything's in place and now we're fitting the top wing. And then I'm gonna use my calipers to verify that my wings are the same distance apart all the way along the length. Running the wires down to the receiver and then gluing on the motor mount. You'll notice that my motor mount is black. That's because I hit it with some spray paint. I think it looks really nice. Then we're onto the rudder. We're gonna put a spar into the rudder and then we're gonna put the control horn on that as well. Then we glue the foam to foam for the rudder. And I was able to just tilt it up and have it hold in place. And right there, we're putting on the tail skid. Don't forget your little guy. What is, what is scarf wave to one side or the other? and just get him centered and glued in place. And then we're ready to move on to our push rods. So for these, I cut out the little standoffs and we put together the clevis ends and then I thread on the little brass pieces, affix them with a little bit of CA and then I crimp them down with some pliers. Once those are in place, We'll twist on one of the clevis ends 
And I like to use a little piece of metal or something to stick between the ears of the clevis. That way you're able to twist it. And you twist those on about halfway. I hit them with some kicker and then I thread all of my standoffs on. And then we're ready to start putting them onto the plane. I was having some problems finding one of the holes, so I used my calipers to figure out how far they are apart and then made sure, yeah, it was in the right place. Once we get that done, we're gonna put some glue onto each of them. I just pull them out a little bit, put a little bit of foam tack on it and push it back in place. These ones are on the vertical part of the fuselage and we get those tacked into place. And once they set up, we're gonna be ready to install the clevis ends onto the servo horns. So I did that on the servo and then now I'm attaching the clevis to the rudder control horn with a little brass pin. You just get it lined up in place and you kind of click it through. Now we're ready to cut the push rods to length. Make sure you have your surface aligned straight when you do this. And then you can just pull your surface back, push it into the clevis, and then secure it with some CA glue. Now I'm doing the gang rods. Thread those all the way through all the end links on the gang horns. And we're gonna measure those to make sure they're the same distance apart but each of those needs to get tightened. And also we do that for the other side as well. And now we're moving on to installing our electronics. We're gonna attach the motor to the motor mount. We're gonna run the ESC and the receiver and then put all the wires into the receiver. Next, I'll balance my prop. I got this prop balancer from Twisted Hobbies. So easy to use. I just put a piece of tape on there and then shorten it as I need to. Use my O-ring installation tool to put the prop onto the plane. And then we are done with the build, ready to fly. And here's the maiden flight. It went really well. The plane tracked exactly like I was hoping it would. It didn't have any strange characteristics. I was able to do some mild acrobatics and I didn't need to do any trimming whatsoever. I actually haven't trimmed this plane at all. It flies really smooth and predictable. I'm running mine on 3S batteries with the center of gravity back 50 millimeters from the leading edge of the top wing, uh, just like the manual recommends, and it seems to be balanced perfectly. I'm able to get about five minutes to six minutes on a 450 milliamp battery, and I've flown it both on 2S and 3S, but I prefer the punchiness that the 3S gives it. I don't give it a lot of throttle all the time, so I'm not overdoing it on the ESC. I hope that this video has helped you through the build and I hope you have as much fun with the crack Foker as I have. <laughs>